Come along, ma'am, she said that morn, as off she went to school. Oh, God, I never thought that life could be so cruel. I never saw my little maid or heard her voice again. Now all I can remember is the anguish and the pain. When I look back and think of her, somehow it seems unreal. Yet I know the scars on my broken heart will never mend or heal. I blamed you, God, and everyone. My mind screamed, why, why me? But you alone knew the answer, God, why the disaster had to be. I do know now it wasn't you, but the stupid greed of man on that terrible day that I lost my maid in the village of Ababa. They wants to put on the death certificate that he was suffocated. Well, he wasn't suffocated. He was murdered. I was in the Abavan disaster. I was seriously hurt with the leg injuries. And I lost my brother and sister in the disaster as well. My grandfather was the first person to get to that classroom. And he saw me. He couldn't do anything about it because he had to rescue other children in the way. I was awake the whole time watching him. And he, he was just crying as he was rescuing me. I started writing the book in the second year, and I was about 12 and a half. And every lesson I went to, I'd pick the book up and write all my uh, story down. I woke to find a horrible nightmare just about to begin in front of my eyes. Bodies lay crushed and buried, and survivors lay looking at their best friends, dead. I can just see someone's hand through the crack in the wall. I didn't know whether it was a boy or a girl. It was a sigh of relief as a man's face stood looking at us through the window. I could guess he was thinking where to start first. He hauled dead bodies through the window. As he looked around with tears in his eyes, I called to him and he saw me. It was then I started to cry as I reached out my arms for him, but he couldn't come for me as there were so many bodies in the way. It was a terrible feeling to wait for someone to rescue you. I hid it for a while because I was ashamed to show my parents. Um, eventually it showed my parents and they were really shocked and very upset that I could write something like that those few years after. And it was kept in the family for a long time after, and a few relatives read it. I was frightened of going to school. Um, I didn't like the sound of the trains, because I had to go to three different schools. And the sound of the trains, I used to remind me of the sound of the actual disaster, the sound. And then I, just, I would just scream or cry in the play yard. So they moved me from school to school. A few of my friends had to see a psychiatrist, and... Uh, we used to laugh between ourselves, but when my mother used to have to take me, she wouldn't tell me, she'd either tell me I was going shopping or something. So we'd get into the car, and then she'd tell me then where I was going. She'd have to drag me out of the car, I was hanging on to the car doors. I was even on, hanging on to the radiator in the hospital. I was just hanging on for grim death, I just didn't want to go in. When they actually got me in there and calmed me down and started talking to me, I felt a lot better. And he read my book as well, and he had an idea of what was in my mind at the same time. And I think he, he did help me. Can I go higher, Cassie? Right, one. I can understand what my parents felt like when they lost. 